Good morning. My name is Terry Christensen, and I will be your worship guide this morning and for the whole month of December. Um, first, we have just a few announcements. Uh, the ladies would love to thank all who donated and supported the Lillian Faith cookie candy sale. It was a great success. We do have some things left downstairs. We have a fudge and peanut clusters and your rod and knives, which are for sale. And then we have also tins of cookies that were left. They're all prepackaged. And if you take one of those, we would love to have a free will offering for that. A large offering. I'm just, I was laying that out there. I, they're totally worth it because I took a tin home last night and I had to hide it from my husband so he wouldn't eat the rest of them. But it was a great day for all. Um, Christmas card exchange is in full swing. Um, if you would like to have Christmas cards for everyone in the church, please fill those out. Put the name on the front. Put them in the back of the parlor there and... I think Jen Hurdle is uh, sorting those out, and then uh, and you can also pick cards up for yourself there. So take a look and see if you have any cards there today. Um, Christmas caroling. We are going Christmas caroling next Saturday. Um, we are going to <coughs> meet here at the church and carpool if you need to. Um, I will be sending something out this week where we're going and where we're starting that if you would want to meet us there. But we plan on starting caroling at 4.30, so we're probably going to meet here at 4.15 to carpool. But more news will come out on your email this week. That being said, if you are not on the email list and you want to be, please contact Nancy in the office tomorrow and she'll get you on that list. Uh, breakfast with a uh, special visitor. Next Sunday, December 17th at 9.30. There is no Sunday school. No junior worship either. No junior worship that morning. You're going to watch for a sign-up on your email. We will be having breakfast, and you'll be getting a sign-up sheet if you'd like to bring something to contribute to breakfast, and we're going to have a special visitor that morning. You all know who he is? You can guess, can't you? The big guy, the big guy in red, he'll be here. <laughs> all right, your January and February upper rooms are available on the back table. Your Samaritan purse, if you'd like to... Uh, do the Samaritan Purse, so it's a great way to bless children around the world. Um, we're going to ask you to go online through the website to do that. Um, and a reminder about attendance, um, the blue sheet in your bulletin, if you can fill that out each Sunday, it's a great way for us to track attendance and membership. All right. Would you all please join me in the breakthrough prayer? Amazing God, we pray that through the Holy Spirit, your preferred future for Groveport United Methodist Church will be made clear to us. Give us the courage we need to follow you wherever you may take us. We ask that you bind us together in love so that we can bring the good news of Jesus Christ to our friends, families, and community. Open our eyes so that we may see the amazing things you are already doing among us. Amen. And now if you please quiet your hearts and minds for the lighting of the candles and the carrying in of the processional cross during the prelude. <laughs>
call to worship this morning. The world is dark and cold. We look, we look for, for signs, signs of, of your coming. The world is hungry for righteousness. We look for signs of your coming. The world yearns for your love. We look for signs of your coming. Please join me in the next hymn of the day. It came up on the Midnight Clear. chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are like grass, and all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass, the grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. You who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout, lift it up, do not be afraid. 
Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See the sovereign Lord comes with power and he rules with a mighty arm. See his reward is with him and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms. He carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, I invite Jean Bozo, Joe and Christy Nichols, and Lance Westcamp to come forward this morning and light our Advent candle for this second week of Advent. In days when God's people longed for peace, Isaiah declared, Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. We who gather today also seek comfort and peace, yet we are unsatisfied with ideas of peace that tell us to keep quiet and go with the flow. We long for real peace, true peace, just peace. We wait as people who yearn for peace that bears the fruit of community, equity, and flourishing for all. Please join me in the Advent prayer. We light these candles. in the second verse of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. together as the body of Christ and raise our joys and our concerns, our questions and our hopes to the Lord our God. If you have a prayer request, uh, you are invited to fill out uh, that blue uh, form that is in your bulletin. You can just fill that out and drop that in the offering plate and uh, Someone will pray for you. Uh, if you uh, would like, you could email your prayer concerns to us at prayer at groveportumc.org. You can also always call the church office and leave a message or talk to Nancy. Uh, or you can always send us a letter because the postman still comes. No matter how we raise our joys and concerns. God is listening. So let us remember that as we prepare our hearts and minds for prayer.
time of prayer. If you would like to be prayed for or prayed with, you are invited to come forward. Let us now enter a time of prayer. During this holy season of waiting, O God, grace us with the presence of mind to be attuned to what this season is all about and just what it is that we are celebrating. Let us walk slowly into Advent and wait as Mary did and, and ponder this wondrous birth. Lord, instead of racing to the store and becoming engulfed in all the madness, we ask that you let us walk slowly into Advent and watch for the holy happenings that come to us as we journey to Bethlehem. Amidst the December darkness, open our eyes to the gift of light in our lives the smile of a child, the hug of a friend, our family gathered here in this place, the delight of music, the aroma of good things baking, and the wind in our faces as we walk toward the warmth of home. Let us walk solely into Advent that we might take note whenever and wherever you are present, even if that is a humble stable. Oh God, we know that you are present in our lives and among us today. So none of the needs and the concerns that are on our hearts this day are news to you. Yet we humbly lift them as a sign of our devotion and trust in you. Lord, we lift to you the family and friends of Matthew Moshi. He passed away after a recent car accident involving a stolen vehicle. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for David and his family. David's mother passed away last week. We ask for comfort to surround all of those who are grieving for her this day. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we lift up Tom and Jackie at this difficult time. Help them, O oh Lord, as they make decisions about Tom's health and treatments. Lord, in your mercy. Your and Lord, we, we raise to you uh, Pat Hartman, who fell and has broken some ribs and, and has a punctured lung and is currently and now in hospice care. Surround Pat with your love and care and, and be with those who are having to make tough decisions for her. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Lord, we lift to you the Gore family. Rob's mother died last week. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we, we lift to you Susan, who had some recent testing done. And be with her, Lord, as she works with her doctors. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for Joyce as she recovers from a stem cell transplant. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we, we lift four young people, Dylan, Logan, Travis, and Meridian. 
Their mother was recently killed in a car accident. Be with them during this difficult time. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we ask for healing and kindness to fall upon all of those who are dealing with cancer this day. We, we ask that their treatments may be effective and the side effects from those treatments mild. Lord, in your mercy. In your Lord, we ask for healing for all of those who are recovering from recent medical procedures. <laughs> Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we offer our prayers in the name of the one we wait for, the one who walks with us even in our darkest times, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I was just handed an announcement that I missed. If you did sign up for Adopt a Family, you need to give your gift to Ricky Meredith today. Ricky's in the back. Wave, Ricky, because you're kind of short. I'm not sure everyone will see you. Sorry. Sorry, I'm just stating the truth. But I love that jacket you have on. <laughs> it comes the time in our service now when we uh, can give back a little bit of what the Lord has given to us. Time for our tithes and offerings. There are several ways you can do that. You can send a church or a check here to the church at 512 Main Street. Um, you can um, give online through our Ezekiel uh, program if you go on our website. And you can also put an offering in the plate as they're passed today. Would the um, ushers please come forward?
Lord, we bring these gifts to you, thankful for all the ways you have healed and enriched our lives. May these gifts be used in service to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Would the children like to come up for our children's time? definitely, uh, you two uh, are definitely outnumbered by the boys today. Wow. That's okay. All right. How is everybody today? Are we good? All right. Who can give me a silent hand and tell me what big holiday is coming up? All right, Robert. Christmas. And one of the things that we do at Christmas is we get these. Anybody know what this is? Christmas card. Have any of you gotten any Christmas cards at home? Nobody sent you a card? Every year? I'll send you a card, buddy. All right. So why do we send Christmas cards? Have you ever thought about that? other than you sort of feel like you have to. <laughs> well, let's look at this one. Who can tell me what this says on the outside? Merry Christmas, all right. And on the inside, it says, wishing you every joy of the, this wonderful season. So what I'm doing is when I send people this card, I am telling them all about the fact that they should be super excited because Jesus is coming. Everywhere, right? Everywhere. Now, we don't just have to send cards to tell people about Jesus coming, do we? What are some other ways we can tell people? Ryan. You have no idea. What a, so we're all stuck to sending cards. Email. You vote. Well, you can email people and tell them. Call, call them. Email. But are there any other ways that doesn't involve sending a text message or other message that you could tell people about Jesus? Talk to them. Okay. How about how about be nice to others? Huh? Oh, we don't want to do that. All right. Oh. All right. So remember, uh, this is all about uh, getting ready for Jesus. And just like we sent cards to, to, to tell people about Jesus coming, we can tell people about Jesus coming also by uh, um, loving others, by being nice, by doing what our parents ask or grandparents ask, and also just by telling them. Okay. All right. Let's. Pray. Lord, we just ask that you bless these uh, wonderful young folks and uh, help them to have a great Christmas season. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you can head off to Junior Church if you want. It's good to know my snap still works. <laughs> My kids are 42 and 30, 38, but when I snapped, they all turned around. When you snapped, I went. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't sure what I did, but I knew I was in trouble. I'm so glad we have 13 little kids up here that I can snap at. That's wonderful. <laughs> Today's gospel reading comes from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. 
In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, as your scriptures are read and proclaimed this day, we ask that by the power of your Holy Spirit, that our hearts, our minds, and our very lives may be transformed by your Holy Scriptures. Thank you for your gift of your word. Amen. Well, I have to tell you, there's a couple of words that can really bring a sense of dread into the hearts of parents everywhere. And that is road trip. <laughs> now, I know some of you, you're... Little ones are here, so we don't want you to have to raise your hand to admit it, but I think there's some of us here that when you think about having to pile everybody in the, the, the car and, and head off to grandma's or grandpa's or wherever it is you're going, you just, oh, it brings dread. <laughs> Doesn't it? And how about packing? Packing's hard. I'm a horrible packer. I just have to tell you. I always like pack way too much of things I don't need. Last time I went to Florida, I swear to you, I brought four sweatshirts <laughs> and no shorts. I don't know what, what, what I was thinking, right? Yeah, it's traveling isn't the easiest thing. It isn't. And how many of you have flown on an airplane recently? I'm telling you, always make sure you wear clean socks and stuff going through uh, security because you're going to have to take those shoes off. And nobody wants to be seen with holes in your socks because you know the security guards probably laugh at you when you leave. Now imagine traveling without the luxuries of vehicle, without the luxuries of air conditioning or even being able to ride. That is what faith Mary and Joseph in our gospel reading this morning. In Matthew, we find that Joseph has finally accepted what the angels has told him or have told him about Mary, and they get married quietly. He marries Mary. Now, as a pastor, I do a number of things. I know some of you are shocked, but I do do some things, and one of those things that I, I, I have been known to do are weddings. And... I've had a few that I've done on a relatively quick spur of the moment because a child was coming. I also know somebody personally who, uh, they were my age when they figured this out. Uh, uh, they started doing the math, and when their parents got married and their birthday, and things didn't start to click quite right, and they go, Pastor Rick, what do you think this means? I go, do we really need to have this discussion? <laughs> but that's what happened in, in, in the case of Joseph and Mary. 
They get married. Uh, they, they, they begin their life together. Everything seems like it may be coming together. Then according to Luke, there in chapter 2, everything in their life, in this new life together, is thrown asunder because of a census. Now, Luke tells us that Caesar Augustus orders a census to be taken of the whole Roman Empire. And if you're like me, when you think of the census, you think of like the census we do here in the United States. You know, some chipper person with a little badge knocks on your door and begs you to answer a few questions on a survey. And we, of course, use that information to determine uh, uh, everything from you know, congressional districts to the demographics of our country. Well, it was a little bit different in the Roman world. See, the, the Romans took regular census, some for statistical data. They wanted to know how many people were in the empire. But more importantly, they took a census, or a census because they wanted to know how many people they could tax. It was about the money. It's always about the money, isn't it? It's always about the money. And the way it would work is, is that, uh, 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 that the male head of household had to travel back to their hometown, and they had to sign in, and then each town uh, figured out how many uh, residents they would have, and then uh, a uh, tax amount would be figured up that was owed to the Roman government, and then private uh, 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 business folks could then um, uh, bid on the contract to fulfill uh, that tax quota. And, and any amount of money that a tax collector could make over what was owed to the Romans, they could keep as their profit. Hence why tax collectors were not well respected. Okay? It wasn't like the IRS that, that figures out what you owe uh, and, and ask you to pay it, uh, uh, tax collectors tried to get you to give as much money as they could uh, so they could keep some. And so this wasn't a happy occasion, but it was an occasion that, that, that had to be dealt with. And so um, Joseph goes and tells Mary that he needs to travel from where they're living in Nazareth back down to Bethlehem, which is only about 70 miles uh, um, uh, you know, as, as the crow flies. But unfortunately, in order to get there, the, the, the road took a little bit. And they really had uh, uh, two different paths they could take. One, which was the more common one, uh, uh, came out of the Galilee where Nazareth is, crossed the Jordan River, went down the Jordan River, crossed back across uh, just north of Jerusalem, and it kept the Jews out of the area known as Samaria. Because as we probably talked about before, the Jews and the Samaritans didn't get along. But there was a quicker way. And the way that traditionally uh, uh, we've said that Mary and Joseph goes, and, and, and it's called the Way of the Patriarchs, and it just cuts right through uh, the heart of Samaria, but it's much, much quicker. And if you see that map there on the screen behind me, that's the, 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 the route of, of the Patriarchs. Again, it's still about 70 miles, but uh, a, uh, a person walking, because remember, they didn't have buses, they didn't have cars, they didn't even have bicycles. You could probably make it in you know, four, four or five days if you really hustled. But Joseph wasn't alone. He was with Mary. And Mary was into her ninth month of pregnancy. Now, I've never been nine months pregnant. <laughs> but those of you who have, I've been told, that is not a time you want to go traveling 70 miles on foot. <laughs> now, we often uh, uh, picture uh, uh, Mary riding a, a donkey, although the, the Bible never says she got to ride, uh, uh, but I, I like the things she did. And it still would not have been an easy trip. 
A, a few years ago, a, a BBC journalist wanted to see what it would be like to be Mary and Joseph. So he rented a donkey and decided to travel uh, following uh, roughly the path that, that, that uh, Joseph and Mary would have taken uh, just to see how long it would take him uh, today to get from Nazareth to Bethlehem on a donkey, and it took him nine days. I couldn't even tell you how long it would take me if I tried to ride a donkey. Now, you might be thinking, Pastor Rick, why in the world would Joseph take Mary, who's nine months pregnant, with him? Well, the Bible doesn't say, but perhaps it's because of the um, instability that the Roman census tended to cause. Uh, we find in uh, Acts chapter 5 uh, a story about another census that was ordered uh, and the violence that erupted around that occasion. And so it makes sense to think that, that uh, Joseph would have been concerned for Mary's safety, being that far away from her during such a crucial time. He decided uh, that it was best if she, if she went with him. Plus, he was from Bethlehem, and so his family would have been there. But that means that Mary would have had to have left her life in Nazareth, and all of those folks that she was comfortable with, and, 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 and head south with him. When we think of this journey, at least when I think of this journey, I'm reminded of all the journeys in life that I didn't want to go on. We all go on journeys we don't want to go on, don't we? Perhaps a loved one passes away. We're now on a journey alone that we never imagined we'd be on. Or maybe we lose a job and, 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 and we're now on a, a journey that, that we never expected. Or divorce or, or some sort of health concern. We all can find ourselves on journeys that we didn't expect. Just like Mary and Joseph. Yet, we're not alone on that journey. Just like Mary and Joseph were not alone as they traveled from Nazareth to Bethlehem, we are never alone on any journey, whatever that is that we are on. And that's what this story should remind us. That no matter what journey we're on, God is with us. God will provide and maybe, just maybe, as we're on that unplanned journey, God will open doors that we never expected to open. No matter what journey you are on, the Lord is with you. His blessings are with you. You are never alone. Let us pray. Lord, the journey of Mary and Joseph reminds us of the unplanned journeys we find ourselves on. Often we feel alone, scared unsure of where we are going, how we're going to make it. Comfort us during these difficult times and allow your spirit to engulf us in your love. Help us to know that we never travel alone. We always travel with you. Help us to rely on you for guidance, clarity, and comfort. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to 
join with me in the great thanksgiving. Christ be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give our thanks to the Holy One. It is right, good, and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give you thanks. You led us in paths of righteousness and peace. In the words of the prophet Isaiah, in the cry of John the baptizer, you have spoken of your great love for your people and have promised to heal all that is broken and forsaken, to redeem all who are lost and lone. And so with your people on earth and all the great cloud of witnesses in heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Blessed is the one who comes in your holy name. Holy are you and holy is your child, Jesus Christ, who came to the river to be baptized and taught us of the Holy Spirit living in us and around us and among us. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. Gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples. And he said, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so... In remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may become one with Christ, who lived and died and rose to bring healing to a broken world. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until we feast together at the heavenly banquet in your eternal realm. Maker of justice and mercy, spirit of compassion and grace, lover of all creation, we give you thanks and praise. Amen. My friends, this is the body of Christ broken for you. And this, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. All is now ready. We practice open communion, which means anyone who feels led is invited and encouraged to participate. We will be taking uh, communion this morning uh, through intinction which means in just a moment, you will be invited to come forward. When you do, you will first be given a small piece of bread. You will then take that bread, dip that bread into the juice, and then take both elements together, and then you may return to your seat. 
If you're unable to, uh, to travel up here, uh, do not worry. Just remain where you are and uh, someone will be around to serve you uh, in just a few moments. I invite those who will be helping to serve communion to come forward and for us to be in a time of meditation as we remember what Christ has done for us. Let us now celebrate the Lord's Supper.
Let's pray. Lord, as we have tasted the the bread and the juice, we know that we have tasted more. We have tasted your love, your concern, your grace. Help us to share those things with all we meet this week. Amen. I have a couple announcements, more announcements that I missed. First of all, please pick up your Christmas cards today in the prayer alcove, which is right behind the organ. Jen is back there. She will help you pick up your Christmas cards. Um, if you are planning on attending the Lillian Faith meeting and dinner on Tuesday night, please RSVP. Um, try to RSVP by the end of the day or tomorrow with Nancy or Patty Upperman, I believe. Is that right? Sounds good to me. Anyway, um, that, because they need an RSVP, they need to know how much food to order. And don't forget next Sunday, December 17th in the morning, special service, no Sunday school, 9.30. Um, we're going to have breakfast. You'll be getting an email about it. And the service itself is going to be filled with wonderful things for the kids and for adults as well. So if you'll please stand now for our closing hymn, The First Noel.
is bringing light to our darkness. We are called to go into the world confident in God's loving presence to serve others in need. Go bring hope and peace to this darkened world. Go in God's love. Amen. Have a great week, everyone, and don't forget to go down and get your cookies.